Peace be with you. Welcome back to Healing Life with Positivity 24-7, 365, 365 and 24-7. This is a platform dedicated to healing obsessively, compulsively, deliberately, finding all good things in life to help us heal from things that could have been traumatic. If you're new to the platform, welcome. Come on in. I send you so much peace, love, and light from my heart to your heart. This is a platform that I created in honor of my inner child, right? Because I felt like she needed to be celebrated for all the trauma and all the drama and all the pain that we overcame. And so from my inner child to your inner child, welcome. If you are returning back to the channel, you already know what it is. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of me. I'm so proud of us. All praise is due to the Most High God. Here we are again. And so I woke up this morning, y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I literally just rolled over. Like I had to come do this video. And so here I am being obedient. I started out with my prayers this morning. Um, as I normally do, but I'm breaking up the monotony. You know, I don't like to be too systematic because sometimes that's just boring. So I did a different prayer today and I did it in a different way and I just kind of broke a routine, right? Which is healthy. Needless to say, um, before we get into this spiritual conversation, let's just uh, take three deep breaths, you know, just to remind ourselves that we are here. We are going with the flow. All is well. You are in this current moment. Uh, the things from the past have passed away and you'll realize that time is really an illusion. So in through the nose and out through the mouth three times. If you're somewhere where you can put your feet planted on the ground, that's always going to be good. Uh, be mindful of your posture. These are just suggestions. If you're laying down or whatever you're doing, however you feel comfortable to do this, I don't really feel like you can mess it up, right? Just remember to breathe. So in through the nose. Inhale. Last breath. I should have said first breath. There is no last breath. There is no last night. There's only the first night, the first breath, the first moment. That's my new mindset. Hopefully you'll get that, you know, pray about it. So listen, I love y'all. You are my soul tribe. I love you. Soul tribe. Love and light. Soul tribe. Love. So tribe, I just felt compelled to sing that song. So listen, I was having a conversation with myself, talking to spirit, and I said, you know what, spirit, so many things are changing in the world. You know, what is it that you need me to do today, right? That's the conversation. Who can I bless? What do you want me to say? How do you want to use my vessel? How do you want to use my voice? How do you want to use my public platform? My whole life and everything that I have is dedicated to you. You are the reason that I've been so blessed. You're the reason that I've been able to have the things that I have that keep my life comfortable. What is it that you need for me to do today? And Spirit said to continue to go forth and just tell the truth. 
And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a big, you know, general <laughs> message, okay? There's so many truth, truths, excuse me, plural, that can be told. And so I want to talk about PTSD, right? Past trauma, post-traumatic trauma disorder by way of things being out of order emotionally. Traumas that are out of order from the past, things that have not been resolved, or maybe things that happened to you that you did not understand. The way that affects the physical body, right? Why meditation? is so vital why committing yourself to being healed right even though this platform is called healing life with positivity if one is constantly healing then when do they get to a point where they're healed right so we're healed we've healed our lives with positivity and we're helping other people to do the same right this is like straight up off the top of my spirit and so i went to the spirit animal oracle this morning right and i just said okay spirit what is it that you want me to share? Just let those messages come out. Um, before we get into the message, I just ask that Spirit continue to guide me, guide my steps. Please close any doors that just don't need to be open. Any false narratives, any illusions, any delusions that somebody could be projecting onto me and or you. Or sometimes it's just illusions maybe and delusions that, you know, unfortunately we've gotten addicted to, right? Okay, so that's kind of like when the mind is... a. Uh, you know, just replaying things over and over that it just really needs to make a decision about. It's how I see post-traumatic stress disorder. Sometimes those energies are displaced. We don't know what to do with them. But now that you are in uh, this evolving state, I hear spirits saying, one must be mindful and consciously aware of what they're doing with their feelings, their emotions, uh, being a watcher of your own character, being a watcher of your own thoughts, being mindful of what you're saying, being very deliberate with your words. Even right now, I'm choosing my words carefully by way of what it is that I feel needs to be revealed in this particular conversation. So I pray that wherever you are, you chime in, comment down below. I love the equal give and take. I'm not above anybody. We are in this together. We've healed together. We are healing people together. We're helping other people heal. Okay, so that is the premise of this platform. And again, with being in spiritual court, I feel like that platform was absolutely dedicated to uh, helping me in a lot of ways process the dark night of the soul. Uh, but when I came to the realization that other people had gone through the same thing spiritually, I was like, what? Like, you know, sometimes you feel like an anomaly. You feel like you're the only one in your family that had to deal with a karmic mother, a karmic father, whatever. And then you do your best to find peace in that, right? And that could be a little difficult, especially if there were people that you had anticipated you would be finding peace with, or, you know, maybe you never anticipated you'd be living without, you know, your mother or your father. So for those of you that had to walk away to find yourself, you know, my heart goes out to you because being on a narrow path is not always easy. Uh, keep in mind with retrograde, you know, sometimes it feels like the, the hands of time have been turned back or maybe you feel like you're repeating another cycle over again. Like, oh my God, no, it's all an illusion. What's going on is the universe is really just assuring that we've uh, healed from what it is that we've had to endure. 12.55 on the clock. As I shuffle the cards, y'all, it's because it relaxes me, okay? Like, I'm shuffling the cards, but I'm also asking Source to give me a card that's going to reveal what it is that needs to be revealed right now. So I pray this message is bringing you a lot of peace. I pray that you're in a position where you can really sit down and receive the message. So, you know, let's get into it. You know, I left the medical field. Uh, I used to schedule appointments for behavioral health. And right in the middle of the pandemic, I started to get a huge like anxiety of which I had never had anxiety before. I got anxiety because I saw the world uh, going through something and I felt helpless, right? I was taking two to 3,000 calls a month, uh, booking for physicians, endocrinology, cardiology, and then they opened up my scope of expertise and allowed me to schedule for behavioral health which indefinitely, uh, I don't even think they've resolved their issues by way of helping people who are going through trauma. 
So when I really sat back and thought about it, I was like, yo, and I'm listening to the stories and I'm taking the calls and I got people on my line that are suicidal and I'm taking extra breaks in between the calls, you know, and I got supervisors calling me like, why are you taking extra breaks? Mind you, I'm working at home at the time, right? So they're like, why are you taking extra breaks? You know, we got to keep our calls going. You're covering all of the Southern California region of which at first I was just covering one county but with the pandemic, things just got crazy. So we got everybody in their house. These people didn't have anybody to talk to. So who are they talking to? Lo and behold, sources molding, shaping, pruning me, preparing me to deal with any and everybody in every situation that I would get off the phone and I'd be bawling out of control saying, spirit, why me? Why did you choose me? What am I supposed to do? Did I do the right thing on that last phone call? Right? You didn't, you, you know, I went to my supervisor and I said, yo, y'all didn't train me for this. But the most high says, I prepared you for it. That's why you were able to talk that person out of suicide. That's why you were able, you know, to maybe offer some type of holistic healing to somebody. And you know, that's not what you were supposed to be saying over the phone. They kept saying, you can't tell them this and you can't tell them that. And once it started to go against my spirit, I walked away from a job that was paying me a whole bunch of money. Because then it became uh, a concern about my soul. Like my spirit wasn't well in the night. I was tossing and turning like spirit. I can't offer nobody this flu shot, this vaccine, you know. Phones being tapped, you know, I could hear that my phones were tapped and there was an echo. Obviously I was working at home, so they were watching me. I had been working at home for eight years, but I felt alone. I felt like I was running my own practice. There was no supervisors, no doctors. I had to console people when there were no nurses available, no doctors available. They couldn't get them appointments. Doctors started walking away. So I'm in the middle of all this trauma and I had started a movement at that time. Y'all just, you know, hang in there with me for those people that want to have a real conversation, just so you know a little bit about me. This is by no means a self-absorbing moment. I don't feel I need to say that to people that get it, but I need y'all to understand why I go so hard for the Divine Collective and why I absolutely have to explain post-trauma. PTSD. I was very post-traumatic when I left that job. I literally took my headset off on a Friday at 2 p.m. and put the headset on my desk and said, enough. The last phone call that I had, I'll never forget it. The guy said to me that he was uh, just newly retired from a job that he had worked on for 20 years. He said he had a friend a month prior that kept saying he was gonna retire and the guy never retired. He said he put in for his retirement. He said he kept postponing it, postponing it. He said and the guy ended up dying. Never got to reap the benefits of his 401k. Never got to reap the benefits of taking a vacation. Just never got to reap the benefits, right? It hit me. My eyes started watering up. I knew that was my last call. I did not know what the most I had for me. I didn't know how I was gonna pay my bills. I had just gotten rid of a narcissistic warlock ass husband who was still doing witchcraft big time over me and still does to this day trying to kill me, period. It was a lot going on and my eyes were opening. I'm like, yo, somebody's been putting something in my food. And you know, it was a lot happening. And here I am walking away from a job that pays me a whole bunch of money and I work from home and I have my children at home and the world is shut down. What is it that I'm going to do, right? Child, listen, I, 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 last phone call, it hit me. I said, I gotta live, I gotta go. I can't stay here, I'm done. I gotta go, right? I was traumatized. The techniques that I thought I understood by way of breathing and I was traumatized. I had to call out to a higher power and say, look, you take over. I had started healing life with positivity and then the world shut down and it was really difficult to bring positivity and light in the middle of what appeared to be uh, 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 Armageddon. Okay, let's just keep it real. So listen, this brings me to my next point. So I had to breathe, you know, 
I ended up going to get counseling and I sat with the counselor and she read me and she says, you're very tapped in. She knew I was going through an awakening. I'll never forget it. I had no idea. I always knew that I had a gift. I was psychic. You know, I could, I saw things that were going to happen before they happened. You know, uh, I then came to the realization that a lot of people that were in behavioral health were chosen people that didn't know how to harness their gifts, didn't know how to use their gifts. They thought they were crazy. Their ears are ringing. They're seeing lights. They're seeing flashes. Uh, you know, they're feeling things in their physical and spiritual body. And it was like there were no appointments for behavioral health. They didn't know what to do. The behavioral health all of a sudden said, you know, the FDA says we're not going to prescribe medication anymore for people. We're, we're suggesting meditation. So mind you, I'm right in the middle of all of it. I'm like, what is going on? And I didn't ask for medication. No, 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 no. I didn't want to do no medication. Okay. Now at the time I absolutely did partake in cannabis, right? So it kept me calm, you know, but then I got to a point where I was able to attain uh, euphoria by way of just meditation and certain things I just didn't need anymore, you know? And I had taken a long break from cannabis, like six, seven years. And then, you know, right when I was pre-menopausal, I, I started to, you know, entertain it again. But by way of like tea, I didn't want to smoke it. I would have like a, a cannabis tea or a gummy or something like that. But then I realized I didn't need that either. Right. I just got to a point where I was able to maintain uh, my physical body, you know, and I'm still able to do that to this day. Nevertheless. Okay, I don't want to get off on too many tangents because I can do that real easily. Child, thank you for letting me be myself and have a conversation. And so uh, post-trauma, so I went and she told me, she said, you know, she said a lot of people are going through the Kundalini experience. <laughs> I said, wow. Had never heard of it. It opened my eyes to a world. I really feel like Source guided her to me. I could have gotten any therapist. We ended up just having a conversation. It didn't feel like therapy. She would make time for me. She knew that I worked for the company that booked the appointments. It's a big billion dollar industry company. When I tell you this, one of the biggest companies on the West Coast, billion dollar company. I worked for the best of the best or at the time, so I thought. And I started to see things and I'm like, okay, this is about money. This is not about spirituality. I got to get out of this company. I got to get out of this business. This is not where my spirit is going. Where am I going to go? You know, everything that I had learned up until that point, everything that I had learned by way of spirituality was being tested. And to say that I had to put those things to uh, work for me, child, listen, I'm gonna be honest. I damn near lost my mind. Welcome to the dark night of the soul. Then I realized certain things like people didn't have to die. I realized people were doing witchcraft to kill people. Like this was a lot for me. Then I realized people were trying to take me out. You know, then I had people monitoring me, a white truck sitting outside my, my house for days. Like, so when you see people online readers and they're like, they're following me, they're doing this, they're doing that. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. They know who chosen people are, okay? It's not too much you can't find out at this point right now by way of technology and our evolution, right? So I was very post-traumatic. I had to go through that on my own with two children, okay, and an older son who was absolutely being spiritually attacked and was going through an awakening as well. Why? Because anytime somebody does witchcraft over you to have a child, that child now is... Uh, kind of dedicated to the spirit realm. Why? Because somebody did witchcraft over me and I didn't know my child's father was into witchcraft. So nobody talks about the karmic children, the curses that they come into the world having to break. Ooh, come on, let's get into it. So I was traumatized. I was messed up. I was like, whoa, what is going on? I had to sit back. I gathered myself. I said, okay, you know what to do. There was nobody there. There was nobody to talk to, nobody to be with, nobody to nothing. And I put healing life with positivity on hold. Okay. Let's just have a real conversation. I put it on hold y'all. I put it on hold. I stopped doing my positive videos. They were funny videos though, just to make people laugh. I would do use like the Snapchat filters and somebody inboxed me one day. They was like, yo, why'd you stop doing 
the healing life of positivity. Like I look forward to your scriptures and you laughing. It was like I would do mix God with comedy. Like let's laugh at this shit. Like that's what's going to keep us healthy. Like that was my whole mindset, my state. And so nevertheless, I stopped it. And when I went to do my platform with, um, you know, spiritual court, I said, no, I got to go help people. Let me tell y'all, I always tell this story. So I'm praying. I got people trying to take me out, people in the family, people was doing witchcraft, all kinds of weird stuff was going on, right? And I just knew that I needed to stand my ground. Whatever that meant for me to do, I said, spirit, source of all things, if you are with me and everything I've learned up until this point is now something I need to use, then it's showtime. Show me what's good. So I got quiet. I started cleansing. I started having to cleanse my children daily. My oldest son got very, very, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, he was being spiritually attacked in the worst way, y'all. So he's now with my family, okay? I pray for him daily. I hope all is well. He's uh, almost 18, okay? And so nevertheless, I still have my younger son with me. But needless to say, I was really going through it and the world was going through it. The courthouses were closed down. I was in California at this time. I had neighbors doing witchcraft. Like everybody knew who I was and I didn't know to my full capacity, Again, I, I had been spiritual. I had gotten into spirituality. I had learned some things uh, about it, but not to the point where I had to really apply it to the full capacity. There was, you know, no, no, nobody to talk to. So this therapist, I started having phone videos with her uh, because we couldn't go in due to COVID. And she became a really good friend. And when I stopped having my sessions, she was like, like, I'm really going to miss you. She ended up calling me personally. I don't know what happened. Uh, I think we just kind of, you know, we just, it just kind of dissolved peacefully. You know, professionally, she was, you know, a doctor, a therapist, uh, or whatever you want to call it. And we just dissolved, but we were like friends. And I feel like at some point I was helping her too. To my understanding, she ended up leading a protest that was saying that they needed more therapists for behavioral health. You had people suicidal, people going through spiritual awakening, people watching the news, people not leaving their house. So just imagine I was taking two to 3,000 calls per month by myself. Child, by the time I left that job, I didn't want to be on the phone. People like, ooh, Neff, you talk. Yeah, I know how to talk. But I hope, I hope that I'm saying something that makes sense, right? She was the one that told me, you know, people go through the Kundalini experience. I was like, what? What is that? And then I started doing my research. And I realized, oh, I'm going through an awakening. And every time the veil would be lifted, my ex would come home and try to feed me something. And then I would get sick and all kinds of weird stuff, right? So I got up out of that. I healed, you know. I remember the day that I was just laying in bed and I was like, I was really post-traumatic because I thought about the people that were being subjected to whatever this experiment was because I saw it from behind the scenes with the medical companies. I'm like, yo, y'all just rushing, rouletting people out here with these vaccines and what the hell? And I got a TB test. And when I tell you I got a TB test, y'all, I, I, I was never into the vaccines. I got a TB test, y'all. I was sick for like 10 years. My body finally recovered till I realized, oh, it's in everything. But the TB test was mandatory. But by the time I got the second TB test that I hadn't had in over 20, 30 years, I said, no, nah, y'all gonna have to do a chest X-ray. If you tested for tuberculosis, you can, you can subject me to a chest x-ray. And this was to keep my job. So then I had them put it in my record. No, I'm allergic to that. Had I kept getting that TB test, child, I don't know what the hell was in the TB test. I just thank the most high that I got some type of angelic DNA. I'm going to be honest. Because whatever they had planned for me, it didn't manifest. And I'm very grateful about that. And I'm just being real with y'all, right? So I was post-traumatic. Nobody there. It was only my children. They saw me going through a spiritual awakening, mind you. They can see spirits, hear spirits. They're dreaming. They're seeing stuff. Their daddies are warlocks and their daddies are still trying to come for me spiritually. And they're guiding me as their parent. My oldest son just got overwhelmed. You know, he just, he just, it was hard. My younger son is like, why is our world like this? We had never seen it like this. We couldn't go to the store. California was deep and I know it was happening all over the world. And I said, okay, the first thing I need to do is turn off the TV. So I disconnected. I don't really watch TV to this day. It's 1 11 on the clock. Thank you, Divine Intervention, for coming through. So then I said, you know what? I turned off the TV because I realized it was just bringing a lot of uh, 
like anxiety for me after I have walked away from this job. So then I applied for my unemployment. Somebody tried to hack into my bank account. Somebody tried to hack into my phone. Somebody tried to steal my disability. I ended up leaving the house. All of a sudden, the owner of the house is like, hey, we, we, we're selling this house. You got to go. I'm like, what? It's Thanksgiving. Like, who the hell moves out? Right? Okay. Nevertheless. <laughs> so I'm just telling y'all that there's post-traumatic situations. And when I tell you that I understand, I know that my story is not that different from anybody else's. So nevertheless, I tried to get a house in that area to stay in that area for my son. It didn't work out. It was too expensive. I quit my job. I was waiting on my disability. I had no disability, um, not disability, excuse me. I was waiting for my unemployment, excuse me. But because I resigned, the company was fighting it. And somebody was trying to steal the money on top of that. Somebody had changed my address. I was like, yo, what in the hell is going on? I felt like I was in the movie Born Identity. Literally. Literally. So when you got people saying, they're watching me, they're doing this. Oh, they was definitely watching me. They knew that I absolutely knew what was going on behind the scenes in the medical field. And that I was very intelligent. And they monitored me. They knew what was going on. When I tell you, they blocked me every step of the way. So I moved around so then i went and i got some help right by way of amdc i said look i said i ain't never got uh welfare i ain't never got food stamps i said but i worked since i was 18 i need my benefits they ended up giving me some program that paid for me um that paid my rent for six months I ended up living in a 10,000 square foot mansion. So I'm looking at God like, what is going on? <laughs> I said, who's going to believe this? That's why I always tell people I'm going to put it in a book, right? Child, get to the mansion. I'm on one side of the mansion, right? There's, there's a lady and her two daughters that live there. And I'm on one side of the mansion. Me and my son, our side of the mansion, like you literally got your own exit. You never see nobody. So really, I was in the mansion by myself most of the time. Nobody was ever there. They were working, whatever. By this time, I'm looking for a job because now my rent is paid for six months. They're paying for me to live in this beautiful mansion in Canyon Crest and Riverside. I mean, when I tell you it was beautiful, tennis courts, the whole nine child. Why did the lady and, and her daughters end up becoming witches? I said, Spirit, you moved me here because I'm on assignment. Child, I cannot make this up. They started throwing witchcraft at me in the house. <laughs> One of the daughters knocked on my door and was like, can you turn your gospel music down? It's really disrupting my demons. I'm like, is this real? In the middle of the pandemic, I'm like, is this real, Spirit? Who's going to believe me? So I always tell this story. I was laying in my bed. I heard spirits say, go to YouTube. I'm like, YouTube? I was like, I don't want to be no damn YouTube star. I'm like, what the hell? I always joke about it. Like, do I need to show my face? Do I need to get dressed? Like, what do I need to do? I work from home, you know, for eight, nine years, pretty much self-supervised myself. I was used to, you know, I was in my comfort zone and spirit was forcing me out of the trenches. Child, I moved around so much. Every house that I moved into Somebody was under judgment. I'm trying to do my YouTube. I put it on hold. My ancestors literally come to my bed and tell me, wake up. When they told me to move out of a house, when I tell you my bed shook, it was like, get up. I looked over like, is somebody in the room with me? I'm like, I know I ain't losing it, right? I'm processing all of what I need to process, childhood, uh, what's going on in the world what the job you know got going on that I left like it was a lot going on <laughs> nevertheless this is the long version of the story hopefully you in it pause it get you some tea honey because this is how I got to this point and I need y'all to understand that because you're going to get a full understanding of why I am so serious about spiritual behavioral health this is something that they won't tell you this is something that they won't divulge to you all these conspiracy theories making people paranoid. The just of the matter is the most high is here. Judgment is here. The whole world is under judgment. It ain't got nothing to do with a political party, uh, whether you want to uh, uh, vote or not. This is a spiritual war. 
I've seen my enemies flee before me. I've seen my enemies drop after praying. And this is when I said, so who am I? I still had not been, you know, uh, advised of who I was. I knew I was somebody that was supposed to do something. So when I heard my ancestors was like, go, I was like, okay. I went to the store, got a ring light. I set it up. I thought about the lady in behavioral health that told me I was going through the Kundalini experience. Didn't know what that was. I'm like, okay. So spirit was leading people on my journey. So in this 10,000 square foot uh, home, there was a guy who was a tenant that had the guest house. This, this place was huge. It was disconnected from the house. He ended up doing witchcraft. He was from Mississippi. So I was like, yo, the more I became aware of energy, I became sensitive. So I ended up leaving there. I ended up jumping on a plane after my dad died, moved to Mississippi. And when I tell you I moved to a town that was so demonically attacked, I damn near didn't even make it out alive. But I kept doing my videos. When my dad died, there was a fire that was put up under me. I said, I got to keep going. I said, because people are going through the same thing I'm going through and I need to find my soul tribe and I got to help them. I promise the most high, listen, if you let me live, if you let me, you know, if you, if, if I survive all this, this trauma, this witchcraft, this whatever, so many people was coming up against me. It just didn't make no sense. I was like, who the hell am I? Then I started hearing earth angels and things like that. And I said, if God had revealed to me that I, that we were real earth angels, I don't know if I would have made it. <laughs> I would have been like, what? Earth angel? Who? Me? Child, I'm just somebody that want to see people happy. Right? People laughed at us. They thought we were weak because we were so kind and so nice. Right? Okay. Holy Spirit, thank you. So, yeah, that is the story. I'll tell y'all more about that later. But I want to focus more on post-traumatic. I'll, I'll tell y'all the rest. We'll pick up on that story later. For those of you that want to hear it, drop a heart down below. You know why? Because telling your story sometimes is the therapy. Share your story. Right? I'm not embarrassed by anything I've had to go through. Hey, I'm not traumatized anymore. I still have my moments where I think about, damn, did that really happen? Like, wow, you know, nevertheless, 118 on the clock, as above, so below, come on in here and let's just get to this spiritual work. But I talk to a lot of people, y'all. The most high put me in position to help a lot of people. Over the years, I talked to millions of people and they would always say, who are you? You're so nice. You're so sweet. You're so this. And I would always say, you know, uh, that I would talk to them from a place of what if this were me? You know, so when I got somebody on the phone that was traumatized or they were hurt or they weren't feeling good, I would always say, what if this were me? That's how I talk to people. If this is me, how would I want somebody to treat me? One lady told me, she says, you two qualify for this company. She says, if they're monitoring your calls, she said, you, she said, you are such a big asset to this company. Now, mind you, behind the scenes, I had witches that was my supervisors doing stuff child it was getting heavy i had no idea until i had an idea like damn this is real people really doing this who child nevertheless post-traumatic breathing is going to always be your best asset when in doubt breathe Something about your physical body, taking the order. Something about when you breathe, you're breathing in peace, prosperity, you're releasing toxicity, darkness, somebody else's energy, soul ties, trauma, molestation, rape, uh, whatever it is, it is a way for you to call your power back. You notice the way the tone in my voice changed? Why? Because I'm speaking from my power, my solar plex. There is nothing blocking my voice and I'm speaking from my truth. Post-trauma, <laughs> meditating is so important. So now I'm the type of person because I am so spiritually sensitive my environment has to be calm. Whenever I'm in my place, like I got music playing, water playing, I keep myself grounded because now I'm exposed to millions. So when people see me on my platform, and I know I got some witches, y'all. Can we just have a real convert? Doggone, say, shun. I know I got some witches that don't like me, child. They on platforms. I've seen them in the, in the dream state. 
They got platforms. They're mad because sometimes I'm exposing their story. They don't like me. They didn't send me witchcraft since I've been on that platform. Let me tell you something. <laughs> sometimes they hear my voice. Sometimes they see me and they like, bitch, who are you? But they don't know the story. I don't look like none of what I've been through. None of what I've been through. I go places and people think I'm really, really young. I don't even talk as much when I go out. I only talk to certain people that my spirit guides me to talk to. I'm very strategic by way of how I move my energy and how it flows. I have learned so much. So when I come here to share my gifts, it's with the hopes that it's going to ignite something in you that you tap into your authenticity so much that nobody can change you. Nobody can come into a room and change your energy and your enemy will continue to flee from you because you've conquered your enemies on the, on the inside. You've gotten over your childhood trauma. Forgive your mother. Forgive your father. You don't know how to forgive. Just wake up every morning and be like, God bless them wherever they are. And watch how the stress from your shoulders just disappears. God bless my mother and my father wherever they are, whether they're living or alive or whatever. Child people, some people are still mad at people that have passed on. Let's get into it. So when I came to that platform, my first video, people don't know how full of the Holy Spirit I was, y'all. They didn't know. And this is only, this is like less than 1% of my story, 122 on my clock as I'm looking at it. Listen, they didn't have no idea. My first video was like, look, this is how I came on my first video. This is exactly what I said. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hi, hello. I don't even say hello no more because hell ain't low. We ain't low in hell. We high in the heavens. Watch your words. They're literal. I appreciate love you. I don't appreciate you, hates. Yeah, I appreciate love you. Watch your words. A Jamaican teacher taught me that. I'm always in a position where I'm coachable by people that know more than me. Once you get to the point where you feel like you know everything, you lost. You might as well check out, roll over, period. So my first video, I came out the gate. I was like, look, like, share, love, subscribe, whatever you want to do. But I got a message. Hey, how you doing? Look, they doing witchcraft. You not crazy. I knew. I said, God, just show me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to say, whatever it is. And then I hit a plateau. There was something that I wasn't listening to. I hit a plateau on that platform to where it was like, okay. You know, I saw the subscribers going up. One, two, three on my clock. Divine order. Listen. I saw the subscribers going up. I rolled over and within a month, I had 10,000 subscribers. I'm like, dang, it's only been a month. I'm like, okay, God. So I just kept praising God, you know, and I was thinking about my dad. He had passed away and I'm like, dang, daddy, you not here. I, I didn't even cry. I couldn't even cry. I didn't cry. I think I recently just cried and my dad's been gone now two, three, almost three years now, just that fast. And I just had a cry. Child, I was on the move. I was, I was throwing myself into God work. I was like, well, if I got to do something, I'm about to do my God work. And if these are the last days and I'm going out like a mother freaking soldier, because I was looking at the world. I'm like, well, what's going on? Are we going to survive or what's going on with the food and all of this? And then I just stopped and I disconnected from the world and I got on a different timeline by way of what the divine was saying. The divine was like, girl, listen, this is the conversation I had with Source. You ain't come here to stay. So when I came to that platform, listen, I wasn't playing. Shout out to the people that can survive a long conversation because it's a real doggone conversation. What you do with it at the end of this conversation is totally up to you. I pray that it inspires you. I pray that it gives you a little bit more insight about why I am so passionate. So I started seeing the numbers grow. I stopped looking at the numbers. I stopped looking at the lights. I, st I just started getting in the comments. I was in the trenches. Like who need a prayer? Because I had been through so much. That the passion and the love that I had for people was like, God, use me. I can't save everybody all over the world, but I knew that there were other people like me all over the world. And those are the people that I need to connect with. But first, I got to go and get my people. Let my people go. Get them about the trenches. Get them about these mental shackles. No, you're not crazy. No, you're not delusional. Don't eat the food. No, yes, your karmic child is probably got a demon attached to them because they daddy had a dark lineage. Nobody talks about the curses in the bloodline. Y'all remember the movie Beloved? Stop playing. Listen, Spirit Ram is real. Y'all remember that movie, Beloved? If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Educate yourself. 
right? So the moment I started to surrender and just allow my angels to guide me and allow source to guide me, I said, you know, I've hit a plateau on this platform. A lot of people don't know. I was almost about to leave my platform. A lot of people don't know that in the beginning of those videos, I was in right in the middle of Mississippi. Child. I saw dead people walking, no spirits. I'm like, what the hell? I'm getting up every day doing my doing my videos. Got family family members that's mad. They started doing witchcraft over me. They tried to affect my health. I was throwing up. I was like, oh, this is witchcraft. Started speaking prayers and watching demons flee. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I realized they had killed my father with witchcraft. I saw stuff buried in my yard. Those first videos, if you go back to those first videos, you're going to be like, Damn, it was nothing but God that was holding me up. There are a lot of those videos, y'all would notice that it was in the summertime and I would start calling down judgment and speaking to source. This is when I really start to realize the power that was within me and that was within my beautiful soul tribe, the power we had together. I was like, oh, this is why they're trying to kill us. We got power. Child, I would call down judgment and thunder would come right then and there. Some of those videos, the rain would come. One guy was like, we ain't never had this much rain uh, uh, in, in, in Mississippi. If you ever get a chance, child, don't ever go to Laurel, Mississippi. One guy told me, he said, you know, this is the devil's punch bowl. I said, look, spirit, this is what I told spirit. I said, look, I need a place. I've been moving and moving and moving. I've been on assignment. You move me here. You move me there. Every single home that I've rented has been beautiful. Y'all live in beautiful areas, but I've always been on assignment. There's been somebody there that is either under judgment, karma, in their last days. And I started to accept my calling. I'm like, okay, so I'm kind of like the last of the Mohicans, you know, not puffing myself up. But I was like, this who you made me to be most high? Like, dang, okay. You know, I was with a lady. God moved me with a lady that he moved me to an estate. Everywhere I've been, it's always been beautiful. This lady had a beautiful estate in Mississippi. When I had to get away from the family that was doing witchcraft, y'all, this ain't even been a year. Come on now, y'all got to get it. Y'all come on in here with me. It's real spill, holy feel. <laughs> Post-trauma. I should really be messed up. It ain't nothing but the grace of God. Don't you ever let go of the grace of God, the hand of the most high God. Yes, we look to the sky, the stars, the, the nature and everything around us, but it's really on the inside. The God on the inside of me don't play about me and my journey. I feel bad for anybody trying to come up against my destiny at this point. So God moved me to an estate. Okay. This lady had a big old house. She gave me the house in the back. She didn't do no credit check. So when I was laying in the middle of the, of the doggone family's house, because mind you, I'm selling my father's house. Nobody knows that. See, y'all just saw the videos going up. <laughs> Nobody knows, child. I was making moves. Solo bolo. Haters, family, demonically possessed people, people from the church, child, doing witchcraft. It was getting wicked. Hmm. So I was selling my father's house, staying with a family member, staying with a guy that was helping me. He ended up trying to take me out. He was a warlock. My family knew it. It was a guy that was helping me. So I was staying with him right next door to my family, small town. And he told me one day, he said, you know, this is what they call the devil's punch bowl. They had a demon so big in that doggone town. I wouldn't wish it on nobody. They were attacking children, doing witchcraft over children, trying to siphon these children's power. The children were unruly. There was a spirit jumping from house to house, literally. You know, they had this app where they would pull up the local news and they was like, yeah, the lady behind us said, they say she just walked outside and just shot her husband. I said, what you mean? They said she was in a trance. So mind you, I'm one of the only woke people, very few outside of this demonic ass group that's doing witchcraft over people in the town. And then the next day, some guy across the way, he ends up getting caught. The feds come. This is a small town. Nothing in the town grows. The trees were falling apart. The trees had no nurturing. Wherever I would try to go in nature to get grounded, it's like you touch the tree and the tree was just empty. I said, something in this town is sucking the life out of this town. A lot of wandering souls. A lot of souls that were sealed in between realms that hadn't left being like haunting people. After 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, nobody was outside. It was crazy. Succubus, incubus spirit. I felt like something was literally trying to draw my soul out of my body. So I ended up leaving there. 
I left. I said, all right, I'm out. Peace. I got to go. Right? God always kept me two steps ahead. I moved to this lady's estate. I didn't know that she was in hospice. She didn't tell me. God rest her soul. Y'all probably remember the video where I said my friend passed away. I only knew her for two months and she told me every part of her life. I kid you not. I feel like she told me everything she could have told me within two months before she passed. They took this lady's life with witchcraft. I found stuff buried around the yard. I felt so guilty because I feel like I figured it out too late. But when I moved there, I disrupted these people. People that she hadn't seen started coming back around because the witchcraft was wearing off. I started praying for her. I had her dog. I couldn't keep her dog. The dog had transmuted energy. Like, I'm like, nobody's going to believe this. Mind you, I'm still doing readings. I'm still showing up for the Divine Collective. Needless to say, I'll get back to that story, y'all. But let's get into the cards. So trauma. It is so important for you to celebrate your mind. And I just felt compelled to cut that story off because I'm, I still think about her, you know, and I'm okay with what has happened. I just feel like God sent me there for a reason. Everywhere that I've gone, it's been judgment. It's like spirit knows had I had spirit kept me in my house, I would not have never gone out to touch the lives of people that I should have touched the lives of. So everywhere that I went was an assignment. I'm staying in million dollar neighborhoods. Like God, it's not like I'm like, oh, I want to live there. God is just like, okay. Like God is moving me to comfort. It was like beautiful. And I'm like, okay, spirit. So you got me, you're guiding me. Every time I say, open up a door for me, spirit. You know, I got to get up out of here. You know, my family is doing witchcraft over me. I got to go. This man that was helping me with my father, you know, he's an opportunist. I got to go. I started reading a prayer one time, sitting on the couch. The man dropped to his knees. I kid you not. He comes running in the house. Get off of me. Some type of spirit had attacked him. I said, oh, yes, it's time for me to go. My work here is done. Right when they knew I was about to leave, they did a real big spell to try to stop me. I keep saying I'm going to get back to it, but then something keeps drawing me back to it because I feel like somebody needs to know this. If you are in a position where you got to go, make a plan and get the hell on. I don't give a damn what you got to do. Move in silence. Know you're not crazy is all I'm going to say. Tell me this card is not in order. Shout out to the people that read these cards backwards. <laughs> it says, Beaver spirit, lay a solid foundation. Make a plan. Get somewhere where you can get some peace and some serenity. I don't care if it's one room. The Most High is guiding your steps guiding my steps i am a living breathing testimony of somebody that has left a whole bunch of stuff behind me, child i didn't give a damn about none of it <laughs> and the most i gave me all of it because i was willing to surrender it whatever it is oh this my house or this my car or i don't want to leave or I don't. listen every step of the way the most high is made a way and i promise you the Most High is absolutely making a way for you. Whoever this message is for, I need you to really pay attention. Listen, the beaver spirit. The beaver spirit is like carving out your way. You know, you ever see a beaver go to work? A beaver will build a dam in a minute where there is no bridge. It's like, oh, I'm going to build one. Oh, there's no yellow brick road around here. Oh, I'm going to make one. Oh, there's no rainbow. I'm going to paint the rainbow in my own sky. Oh, there's no sun. There's no joy. I'm painting that in my own sky to get over whatever has tried to keep me bound. It's a spiritual warfare. Forgive those because forgive those people that tried to stop you, hurt you, brother, cousin, whoever, friend. You know the story. We ain't got to keep reliving that. Forgive them. Why? Some of them people was possessed. Yeah, that's why they face look different. That's why as you were going through your awakening, you like, am I crazy? No, you're not. You're seeing. You're waking up. That is the great awakening. It can be very traumatic when you realize and start seeing things in reality. Like, damn, people don't have to die. They don't have to. 
Like where I'm at now, the most high put me in a safe haven. Do people still try to send me stuff? Yeah, that shit bounces off of me, literally. It bounces off the entire city. Child, I drive through my city and I pray over every single last one of my neighbors. Stop playing. Who's out there doing the work? Do the work. You're vital. You're essential. Even if you never make it to a platform, even if you people don't know what you're doing, your prayers are being counted. They matter. Listen. Next card says, the koala spirit. Spirit has a plan. This is what it says. It not just, thank you, spirit. My God got a sense of humor too, okay? Thank you, Spirit. Lay a solid foundation. Spirit has a plan. I follow the divine plan of my life. As I lay this foundation, a beaver will create. Work until it's done to create stability, shelter. Follow your passion. What are you supposed to be doing? Are you a prayer warrior? Just start doing it and watch Source take care of you. In a time that people appear to be scrambling for resources, you will always be fed. The righteous never go begging for bread because you really are clocked in and or employed by source of all things. We're employed by source of all things and the universe absolutely pays us out more than enough of what it is that we need. So the koala spirit, you got the number six. That could be significant. Look that up. That could be an angel number. Number 35, three plus five is eight. As above, so below. Koala spirit, spirit has a plan. I tap into the divine plan for my life in a moment where I didn't know what to do, y'all. And now keep in mind, I had previous traumas too. I lost a child due to witchcraft. I didn't know that till years later that somebody did witchcraft for me to lose my son at nine months. I didn't know anything about any of that. I just knew to pray, okay? I was in the nation of Islam, right? So the PTSD is so important, why? Because every single trauma has been turned into a triumph. Every time I get on this platform and I'm able to change and or touch somebody's life or they share this video or you go and you touch somebody's life, I know that this energy is now contagious because I wanted to ignite something in you so deep. I want the tears to flow so much that you release whatever you need to release and let it go. We got a lion's gate open. What does that mean? There's a portal open for us by way of the divine and heavenly realms. You got angels. We have angels that are absolutely enforcing our authority in the earth. Come on. What would you do with your power and your authority? Child, that's why I say when I feel people on the other platform coming to attack me, these little readers, I know who all of I know who all of them are. All of them. I just sit there and look. I just sit like this what y'all doing with your time and your energy and your authority because you so concerned that judgment's about to come down on you when you thought you were exempt. Nobody's exempt. Everybody's under judgment. I got to watch what I say. The most high said, look, you work for me. You better be obedient. I got to really like, like get into it. So, oh, I had meant to say, I had said this and I got off on another subject. Y'all, I do that a lot. So thank you for letting me be myself. I've accepted that about myself. I got a lot of brain activity. I thank God for it. Listen, on the other platform, I was going to walk away. I hit a plateau. It was getting monotonous. The numbers were going up, you know, the monetization. Okay. People were like, oh, you're going to monetize. You're going to monetize. Child, the first year, I didn't get a dollar. It was all because of the donations. I thank God for working through the subscribers. All praises be to the most high God for working through the subscribers. Because that's how I was able to eat. That's how I was able to pay my bills. Like, but I just kept working for a source. Like that was my main concern. I got up, I was like, I gotta go to work. People was like, you ain't got no job. You ain't, where are you going to clock in at? I ignored them. I didn't have time for no low vibration or nothing. But I got to a point to where I was like, okay, spirit. I got people that know who I am. They're big people. They're attacking my platform. Okay, I got big people in high places, celebrities now watching my platform. I knew it. Cause I had a dream about a celebrity that was watching my platform that was trying to do some magic, right? Nevertheless. They just mad because they're getting exposed. And then shortly after, Cat Williams came out with what all he came out with. And then it made a lot of sense while I was having dreams about these celebrities. So I said, should I walk away? I was like, but dang, I feel like there's more people that still need their stories told. They still need to come up out of the dark night of the soul. Uh, they still, you know, that's the purpose for spiritual court is just let's reveal it. Let me tell you, you ain't crazy. So now what? You got to get up 
forgive, move on, and, and, and try to do the best that you can with what it is that you've gone through. And then I heard healing life with positivity 24 seven. I'm like, oh, that's what I've been ignoring. Why am I ignoring that? What is, what is it in me that's ignoring that spirit? Why am I ignoring it? And this is how I gave light to this platform. That's what I was gonna say in the beginning of the video. And what are we like 54 minutes in? Thank you for being patient. Hopefully you watch it in its entirety. Hopefully you survive. I, I hope you like, love, share, and subscribe. Share it. It helps the video grow. It helps it get out to people that need it. That's really the purpose. The coyote spirit, this says trust in divine detours. Thank you, spirit. So if your life is being detoured, listen, there's a divine plan for your life. Spirit is saying set a plan. If you need to leave somewhere, you need to go. If there's magic being done in a community, whatever the case, you need to make a plan. Not because you're moving out of fear, but because you're moving to where source wants you to go. There's somebody that needs either healing. There's somebody that you need to meet. Sometimes staying in one spot is not the way to be. Like how can spirit use you when you need to get into the trenches? So if you're being guided to relocate, this is not for everybody, then do it. Make a plan, a solid plan. I don't care if you save a dollar a day. Make a plan. Pay yourself first. This is what I had to do. It's just confirmation of what it is you know you need to do. I can't tell you to do anything. You got your own free will, but I hope that somehow somebody can use this. Spirit has a plan. Remember that the divine plan for our lives are greater than any plan that any man, any enemy can plan for us. They ain't planning a damn thing. Their shit has been canceled, okay? And we're in the middle of retrograde, so a lot of this stuff that's going on between now and December is just illusions. That's it. So if you're feeling stuff in your physical body, you're feeling energies and all that and headaches and blurred eyesight, you're going through a big purge. Just take a deep breath. When in doubt, breathe. Listen, coyote spirit, trust in the divine detours. That means that if spirit closed the door for you, that wasn't the one you're supposed to go to. Do y'all know right before I got this home, there was a home that I really, really wanted. And it's so funny, y'all, because right now it's 144 on the clock. <laughs> this is so funny. The address of the house was 144. I kid you not. And I was like, spirit, I know this house is a house for me, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. But there's something in me was like, what is going on here? What, what is it that I'm supposed to feel in the middle of all of this? And it's 144 on the clock. That's so funny. And I said, this is my house. It was beautiful. I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I can do my work. I can do my cleansings, blah, blah, blah. Listen, long story short, the house ended up falling through. And so those videos where y'all saw me, I was in a really nice hotel. I thank the most high for that hotel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was comfortable. My son had a good summer. He was able to do some beautiful things. Like it was really, really beautiful. I homeschooled my son. So we moved, you know, when we, as we were moving, we were still doing homeschool. But luckily enough, it was summertime. There was no school. So I said, Spirit, that wasn't the house for me. Do y'all know in that hotel... There, was, there were people that I met that I was supposed to meet, earth angels. I met a shaman that I'm connected to. I said, listen, trust these detours. Spirit was always guiding me. It wasn't that I took a loss. It was that spirit was protecting me from something. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there was something that I was supposed to do before I got to this point that spirit could see that maybe I wasn't privy to. And it wasn't until I had to get still and fully understand that, right? Needless to say, your detours. I met people there that, that I love, strangers that helped me. I was like, well, what am I going to do now? I got to get out. So you know what I did? First thing I did was I shifted my perspective. I went. I said, well, if I'm going to be in a hotel, I'm going to use the gym every day. So I started working out. <laughs> I laid out in the sun every day, went to the pool. Just laid out, child. Got so chocolate, got so so chocolatey good and just let the sun go into my body, harvesting all that light. And I continued with my readings. And spirit led me to the right place. When I tell you it's the perfect place for me and the work that I need to do, I'm very, very grateful. I'm very, very grateful. So whoever you are, keep that plan in your mind's eye. If you're living with family members or you got to get away from family members, stay the course. Remember, there are spirits on assignment that know who you are energetically and they will use people close to you to try to get to you. 
Pray for them, ignore them, but do not subject yourself to that energy because, again, some of them don't even know why they're doing what they're doing to try to stop you. Needless to say, okay, we got the period spirit. It says, watch your words. Thank you, spirit. Watch your words. I am divinely watching my words. I'm speaking optimum health over myself. I feel amazing. I speak my truth well, and I bless my throat chakra. Because I speak in the public eye, because I speak to a lot of people, I always ask the divine to just keep my throat protected, my voice protected, that there be honesty, truth, and healing in that, right? Because we are truth tellers, we are truth seers. So bless your eye gates, your ear gates, that you will always hear the truth and know the truth um, by the way it feels, right? Yeah. The swan spirit, time for a deep dive. This is telling me go within, deep diving, going within, get into the root, right? You know, there were times in my life where I threw myself into work to stay away from what it was I wanted to face or had to face, okay? Or didn't want to face, thank you, spirit. And um, so, but when, when things got settled and I was able to balance and spirit said, this is a time for rest, that's when everything comes to the surface. Every single relationship that you've had up until this point absolutely deserves some type of introspection, meaning you go within and you see it from a position of the divine. Not my will be done, but source's will of all things be done in my life because that is the perfect plan for my life. That is what keeps me well and healthy and mentally sane. And this is how I move through the trauma, right? That is now a triumph. No more trauma bonding. This is not a trauma bonding situation. We're bonding by way of overcoming our traumas. And now we're triumphantly being of good use by source. Come through spirit. Time for a deep dive. Go on within. Look at that swan. I love the art on these cards. They bring me so much peace, love, and life. The number 60. Six is a real significant number. The coyote spirit. Okay, this says trust in divine detours. Number 16. One plus six is seven. Period spirit, four plus five is nine. That represents rebirth. Something about yin-yang energy, six and nine is coming up. And then the number eight, as above, so below. So watch your words. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are not who you once were. Now who are you conceiving yourself to be, you know? And so you speak those words as though they are. I'm intelligent. I'm beautiful. From the inside out. Then the physical body takes the order. It's something about speaking those words from the inside out. I'm beautiful inside out. My light comes from within and it shines on the outside of me. And then the physical body starts to take the order. And then people start looking at you. They're like, oh, you look really good today. What they're seeing is your energy. What they're seeing is that all is well on the inside. So diving deep with this particular card spirit is telling me could be writing, journaling, writing letters. Okay, I need to really get back into that and I need to write a couple of letters to people that I've left behind. Okay, this lion's gate is giving opportunity uh, for you to purge in a way that you've never purged before because the world is about to go through something very, very interesting. Politically, spiritually, mentally. Okay, <clears throat> the wasp spirit. This is so funny, y'all. I got stung by a wasp. When I tried to move into that house and I looked up the spiritual meaning and spirit was like, pay attention to what's going on around you. True story. The wasp. 64. Six plus four is 10. It says, sometimes life stings. I got stung too. Why? Because life is waking you up to something. Right. Sometimes we can get into a routine. We can create a space of safety after going through so much trauma that we don't move towards anything new. Whether we realize that or not, we can't do that anymore. I need to watch my words. I'm going to be mindful. So instead of saying that life stings and you get into this comfort zone or you build up these, you know, barricades or you're not letting anybody in, we're letting people in to love us. Love is something that you're going to do no matter what. Even if it doesn't come back in the way that you anticipate or that I anticipate, 
love is always something that we are. I love myself. I respect myself. I have a lot of love to give to myself. My cup is full with love and the overflow is what I decide to share with other people. I heard Ayanla Van Zant say that one time. God bless her wherever she is. Listen, the flamingo spirit, embrace the in-between time. Listen, those times in between before the big you know, shebang or whatever you're waiting on to come in. You know, we see we got the Ten of Pentacles, Ace of Cups, the Lovers, all of that. Enjoy that in-between time. The molding, the shaping, the pruning, the crying, the purging. Encourage yourself to cry, be it happy tears or sad tears. It's a release nonetheless. This says the fox spirit. Think on your feet. Be swift as a fox. Be quick. Right? Right? Know when there's a time to rest and when there's a time to be still, I just heard. The number 27, 7, 8, 9, the number 9 again is showing up. 9 represents transformation. The number 9 is literally transformation. It's just a circle. That's all it is, going in a circle. Death, transformation, rebirth, De death, transformation, rebirth, and resurrection, right? The fox spirit. Think on your feet. Be quick. Slow to speak quick to listen, right? Thinking on your feet, embodying all of your gifts, letting them guide you, allowing them to take you to places that you know you need to be. Yeah, being obedient to that. Sometimes it could seem a little uncomfortable. I'm gonna be honest, there were times where, you know, me moving was uncomfortable, but I knew that I was on a journey. Spirit had a plan. I had to lay a solid foundation. Now my foundation is solid. I told Spirit, hey, Spirit, you know, I, I, really, I really would like to kind of take a break from being on those kinds of assignments. <laughs> you know, I really would. I really would. And now I'm moving into something new by way of my practice that is, uh, it's interesting, you know, where I'm going. I have to share all of what I've learned uh, with people, but it's more hands-on. Like I'm meeting people more in real life. I think a lot of us got comfortable being uh, isolated when we had to be due to COVID, right? And some of us kept that same energy. But nevertheless, the cat spirit. So now I gotta now I gotta really get in the trenches, y'all. I gotta open up. I got people that are now like me in real life, which is beautiful. A lot of uh, the beautiful people that I know are online. Uh, but now spirit is just sending beautiful people into my life, and I'm really grateful. I'm, I'm, I mean. It's like everywhere I go, I'm meeting great people. In the hotel that I stayed in, y'all, oh my God. These people treated me so well. I had conversations, healing. I'm praying for people in the hotel. Uh, it was just beautiful. My housekeeper almost cried before I left. She didn't speak any English. She was like, you're leaving? And she was, oh, she didn't speak no English. But she was so sweet to me. She kept my room up to par. I always told her, thank you. I was so grateful. You know, I would tell her, oh, I'm going downstairs. Air has CCO, you know, going to exercise and let her know you can take care of my room. And when I left, uh, it was just it was just so beautiful. So I promised myself that when I'm back in the States, I would always go to that hotel just to see them. I exchanged numbers, emails. Uh, there was one guy there going through a spiritual awakening wherever he is. I pray all is well. But they were absolutely beautiful people. They were angels, literally. <laughs> literally angels on my path. Okay, it's all I can tell you. But the cat spirit, claim your independence. Yeah, one plus three is four. The number 13 is real significant. Okay, um, the cat spirit, claim your independence. You are not like anybody else. I'm not like anybody else. Like even if you come across somebody that, you know, is doing some type of self-help, uh, life coaching, they have their way of doing whatever it is that they want to do. And that is beautiful. That is so wonderful. Look how sassy the cat is, honey. Look at, ooh, she is covered and adorned with gems. It's like um, authenticity beats everything by way of creativity because you are you because you're you yes we all have similarities yes uh we we remind ourselves of each other there are things that we can see in one another that are similar and that's beautiful because they're beautiful things right 
But at the end of the day, the Most High is so creative that we're all different in very beautiful ways. The similarities and, and what we have that's comparable to one another is love. Like I see the God in you. I see the love in you. I see the light in you. I see the, you know, because that's what I'm carrying, right? I see how much you've healed because I know for myself, we recognize certain things in people based on who we are and who we've been. That's a beautiful thing. The eagle spirit, spirit has your back. Yeah, listen, I've been seeing a lot of eagles lately. This is giving me indigenous people, ancient God energy. A lot of you have been here a whole bunch of times. I'm gonna be honest. Y'all some old souls. You know, I always joke about, not even joke. I always give, uh, I always joke about, well, I do joke about it. Let me just be honest. Yeah, about how when I was little, they used to say, ooh, she got an old soul. Chala was prophesying at like three years old. <laughs> In the middle of Louisiana, child, they was doing witchcraft and I was having dreams about the devils and the demons and my future. And I was three years old telling my mama like, look, I saw the devil. I was standing right next to the devil. The devil couldn't even touch me. I kid you not. I was about three or four years old. And I told my mother and I was living in New Orleans, Louisiana, not knowing the town was haunted. I'm a little starseed child with a purpose child and everybody in the family is crazy. That's all I can tell you. Listen, and I was standing right next to the devil. I'll never forget it to this day after all these years. That devil was standing right next to me. Whatever that was, it was tall, it was demonic, and it just couldn't touch me. I had dreams of my future. I saw all my enemies. It was like the Most High was letting me know this path is not going to be easy, but it'll absolutely be vital and necessary. I was three and four, five and six, having dreams. They had me sleeping in an all red room. Didn't know why I was in an all red room, you know. Now looking back in hindsight, I feel like my grandmother had that room uh, because it represented protection down in the south. You know, red was like being covered in the blood, the blood of Jesus. Yeah, she was a, she was a really beautiful grandmother, rest her soul. Nevertheless, eagle spirit has your back, okay? So this is your ancestor saying that they have your back. With the eagle spirit, you know, the eagle is a sharp eye. The eagle don't miss nothing. The eagle knows how to go after what it wants and it's never distracted. There could be a whole bunch going on. The wind could be blowing, but the eagle soars above the winds. And when it can't soar above the winds, when the winds gets too strong, the eagle allows the winds to carry it wherever it needs to be. Divine detours. Spirit has a plan. Somebody has to go somewhere. Wherever you're supposed to go, this is where you're going to find peace. This is where you're going to be in a position. I just heard Spirit say to get into position. Wherever you're going to be, you're going to be there because the world is about to go through something major, like big. It has to. It's, it's overdue. Stag Spirit, okay? Take the lead. So this is for the leaders, number 58. What is that? 8 plus 5 is 13. Three plus one is four. You could be seeing four, four, four. So the stag spirit, take the lead. You're a leader. You're a teacher. Okay. If you felt like you uh, want to come out and do something very bold, you don't know how to do it or just do it. Just go. Say source of all things. Use me. Speak through me. Whenever I get on here and speak, this is source speaking through me. I sit back and I listen to the message too. I'm like, damn, this was deep. Right. To whom all praise is due the most high God. Ooh, the white raven spirit. Trust in the magic. Trust in your magic. You are magical. I am magical. We are breathing, walking, good energy and light. I'm telling you, in order to be a healer, in order to be a teacher, the number 66, six plus six is 12. One plus two is three. That is ascended master number, divine energy, holy trinity energy. As we sit here together, we trust in the magic of who we are. As a healer, you know, we have to remember to pull back and fill our cups. Why? Because we're always touching people and healing people and be that energetically, literally, physically. You have to know when to pull back and fill your cup. Trust in the magic of your life. Trust in miracles, okay? I don't care what the world is going through. Who gets in office? Source has a divine plan for the chosen ones, those people that really answered the call. The seahorse, I hope more people answer the call. I really do. 
when I see karmic stories and people that just keep staying in darkness and they're projecting nasty, evil energy, like right now, both my ears are ringing. Somebody somewhere is doing something dark, trying to knock me off my kilter. I'm, I'm, I'm already aware of it, but I understand it comes with the territory. You're not going to be able to help everybody. I had to learn that the hard way. Some of the people I tried to help, child was trying to stab me in the back. I'm like, dang, I'm just trying to help you, you know? Release them and go on. Sometimes, like I said, they're battling demons that they can't conquer and they're mad because you conquered yours and, you know, leave them with love and light and move about your path and just trust in the magic and the miracles for your life. But um, yeah, that was something I learned the hard way. You cannot help everybody. Some of us stayed far too long in situations with people that we cannot help. It's like, oh, but that's my sister. Oh, but that's my mother. Listen, somebody, it's time to go. Wherever you're going to be, it's, that's your safe haven. Like right now, I'm in my safe haven. I'm in my safe haven, literally. I love it. It's beautiful. I wish this for everybody. Safe haven meaning you feel safe. Remember the first time you felt safe. Remember the first time you felt unsafe. Bring those two experiences together and realize that you have the victory over it. Be that mentally, spiritually, physically, however you want to do it. Listen, watch and wait. Thank you, spirit. Pray, watch, and wait. There are miracles on the way is what I just heard. There are miracles on the way. Rabbit spirit, now is a lucky time. So we're in divine alignment. It's just right now with this lion's gate, with the shadows and or the retrograde, some of it could feel a little weird and a little wonky and you could be like, well, what the hell is going on? You know, these are just shadows that need to be addressed. That's all. Before you get to this next level, it's almost like spirit, clearing out your spirit, making room for good energy, clearing out your space getting rid of old things, mindsets, creating a new mind. I just heard creating me a new heart and a new spirit, please spirit. That is a prayer, a new beautiful spirit. Cause there's just some parts of us that have to go with certain circumstances, certain doors that have to be closed indefinitely. They just have to go. This says the moth spirit surrender now, not later now to the divine plan for your life. Number 39, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, the number 12, 2 plus 3, a lot of ascended numbers. 333, three, three. Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't believe in the Trinity. Well, you know, <laughs> what do you believe in? Whatever that is, do more of that. As long as it's really good, I support you in the energy. The wolf spirit, turn knowledge into wisdom. Come through spirit. Come through spirit. The number 13, 67. One plus three is four. Changes are coming. Good changes are coming. The wolf spirit. You know, a wolf is uh, somebody that knows how to fight back spiritually is what I'm getting by way of spirit energy, right? Wolf as in the animal spirit. Spirit by way of how you connect with the wolf's energy. I'm going to look these animals up too, just to get a little bit more insight for myself, but turning your knowledge into wisdom, taking what you've gone through, your traumas is how you get through. So PTSD, post-traumatic stress, write it down, burn it. I declare a decree that I do not have PTSD. What I have are stories by way of traumas turned to triumph that do not traumatize me anymore. That's an affirmation. That just came right out of my spirit. I love y'all. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you for allowing me to purge. Comment down below. Let's talk. I'm gonna, I am gonna. need to set up, y'all. Y'all just be patient with me because, woo-wee, I gotta set up my email. I know some of y'all are still emailing and um, I've not gotten to those emails yet because there's just so many I don't know if I told y'all, but somebody tried to hack into my emails. So some of the emails come through, some of them don't. And then I was just, you know, transitioning a lot with getting things done. But I think I'm going to open up personal readings, but it's going to be more on a shamanic level. Like, let's talk about your healing now. Now that we know that mama, daddy, whoever did what, what, when, why, and where.
okay? Whatever your circumstance, right? Whatever your trauma is that you turn into a triumphant victory that no longer traumatizes you. Um, I want to talk more about how we're going to step into our purpose and what is that looking like? How do we connect in real life? You know, how do we meet each other in the real 3D and get something done? How do we create resources for the soul tribe? How do we become our own sovereign spiritual nation? Etherally, right? Because energetically, we're a force to be reckoned with. When we all pray together, child, we shake up the ethers. Don't let these devils, like, trick you out of your spot. Whatever they doing, whatever voodoo, hoodoo, whatever, child, listen. We scare these people so much, it ain't even funny. Okay? But I love y'all. Listen, I'll be back for another video. Thank you for being here. I think this could be, very well be the longest one that I've done to point. One 2020, child, 2020 vision. What are you seeing for your life? What am I seeing for my life? I see great things for all of us. And then there's the miracles. There's things that we want to happen, things that we're, you know, able to see. And then there's just those beautiful surprises, like lucky surprises I just heard that spirit is just going to surprise us with. So wrap your arms around yourself. Oh, hi, self. Tell yourself, I have every right to be here. I am radiant. I am beautiful. I am kind. I am loving. I am wise. I am using my life as a great example of what beautiful, triumphant, divine victory looks like in real life. My body thanks me. My Holy Spirit thanks me. And I'm so glad to be in divine alignment at this time. I release all negativity, anything that is still lying dormant, any ill will, ill intentions, spirit of retaliation, spirit of anger, strife, jealousy, whatever it is, right? Known and unknown. I release that from my physical body and my energetic field, and I no longer need to be acquainted with it. Congratulations, y'all. We just broke up with PTSD. We had a conversation. Hey, PTSD, you know, we've hung out for a little bit of time here. It's time for you to go. Write it down. I'm going to write PTSD down and just burn it. <laughs> just for my past traumatized self. Okay? And the people that could still be dealing with it. I'm about to burn it. I'm going to write it on a piece of paper. Like, get the hell up out of here. It's over. It's done. Adios, Ariba, motherfucking Delchi. I love y'all, okay? I'll see you in the next video. Until then, as always, you know I love you. Peace be with you.